Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Great. Fantastic, man. Here we go again. This is wonderful. Glad you all are on board. Um, is everybody doing good? Yeah, it's been a good couple days. I've had a good couple days. How about everyone else? Wonderful. I, I have, I'm going to jump right in because I got a praise. We got a contract on our house today. Isn't that wonderful? So, yes, been working on it this, this afternoon, and you know how it can go, tizzy back and forth, back and forth, question this, question that. But um, so far, we have a, a signed contract, and we're going to get into the home inspection and all that stuff, and then whew, we're going to keep on transitioning. So it's really good, really good. Julie and I are thrilled. Um, but that being said, does anybody have any prayer requests and or other praises or thanksgivings? Terry. Prayer. Prayer. Uh, Brother-in-law Randy Conway had heart surgery this morning. And surgery went well, but he'll need prayers for healing. Yeah, okay. And praise that it went well. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Jen, for Wednesday. Got some things going on. Big time Wednesday at 1? One. 1. Okay. If you could be praying for Jennifer and Sean. Uh, and Wednesday, and Absolutely. Kellen, uh, Wednesday at 1 o'clock, be praying for them, please. Anyone else? Bud? Uh, just a friend of ours that their cancer tests come, come clear. But, uh, a little nervous right now. Okay, Steve. Okay. Okay. Good, good. You said doctors again on Thursday. Is that right? Okay. okay. Anyone else? Anybody on Facebook? Yes. Carl Hopkins, open heart surgery on the 24th. Okay. Any Thanksgivings? It can be the sunshine. <laughs> really. All right. Um, before we go to prayer, I'm going to go ahead and just and share a few announcements. Um, as I mentioned last week, we're not going to have Bible study this coming Tuesday on the 25th. And so then the next Tuesday, we will be starting back and we will be doing kindness. So tonight we're going to kind of do a little overview, answer all of your questions, have the great discussion on patients that I anticipate we're going to have because you've had a week to practice everything. And then we're going to finish up patients tonight. I'm not getting any amens or anything like that. At all. No response or feedback or love or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's what we'll that's what we'll do this evening. And as far as any other announcements, got, yes, Pastor Phil. One more prayer request. Oh yes. Barb Vanderborn. Vanderborn. Barbara. She has cancer. Okay, we'll be praying for Miss Barb. Okay, yes, Jen. Uh, Ron is in the hospital up in Columbus because of labor. Ron. He's the one with the open heart with the heart transplant. Did you say low grade fever? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then um, we, we had um, Monday meals last night, and um, there's a gentleman who's been uh, been coming for quite some time. His name is Michael. We have called him affectionately Big Mike here. Um, and he is going to Columbus Thursday for um, some type of procedure. Um, we're 
believing that it's lung cancer. Um, he told me that he was going to have his right lung removed. Not sure if that's ex exactly the case, but um, he was completely overwhelmed last night. Um, so we had a chance to just to, to be with him and to pray with him. So he's going to be up there on Thursday. So we just need to keep um, Big Mike in your prayers. Um, when I first met him, he is big man, um, filled out, I mean, everything. And, and last night, just completely sunken in and and just skin and bones, basically. Um, and just we, we stood right over there at that table, and, and he just had his tray on the table, but he just was leaning in on me and just holding him up and just getting a chance to pray for him and just tears. And um, he is scared to death. And Miss Pat and I had a chance to talk about it. he is. He's just scared to death. And um, it was great to be here with him. He had a place to come, and that's awesome. That's awesome. But let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, then we'll, we'll jump in um, on patience. Father, Lord God, we thank you for the day that you've given us. We thank you for your love and, God, your affection that you pour out on us. Father, I thank you for putting us in people's paths that are in desperate need of you and who want to cry out to you. And, Father, at times they don't even know how, but, but you place us in their paths so that, you know, at times, God, we can just be their voice. But God, you see their heart and you know their hurts and you know their pains. And Father, you are so faithful to visit them where they are. And God, we're grateful for that. We are just thankful. And, and at points, words can't even describe that. But Father, you have blessed us and we thank you for loving us. And tonight, Lord, there are, are requests that we bring to you. <clears throat> Randy, that's going to have heart surgery the appointment that's coming on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Father Bud's friend who has cancer. Lord, we're, we're grateful for Denise's report and that things are moving in the right direction. But, Father, that um, we know that there are other appointments ahead and on um, Thursday. And, God, we just ask that you continue your blessing there. Father, for Carl Hop, Harp, Hopkins uh, on the 24th to have open-heart surgery and Barb, who has cancer, Father, we pray your healing upon it. Father, you are the healer. You are the great physician. God, I pray that you are glorified through these things. Lord, we also ask prayer for Ron, who has a low-grade fever. You know all about the situation and everything that he's been through up to this point. Father, I ask you to bring your peace upon it and your healing grace upon it as well. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week, we were in patience. I thought we had some good discussion, and I know that everyone practiced so hard this week. That's usually where you go, Amen, Ian. <laughs> we were just driving it home. Or you go, I found out every area I need to work on and the people that I need to work with and da, 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 all those different things. <laughs> is that you, bud? Okay. Well, good. Knowing is half the battle, right? That's right. So um, patience, and we worked through um, a lot of what patience is. Patience is love, and it is trust. It is wisdom. It is the clothing we wear. Patience is disarming. And patience is an example for others. That's a lot, isn't it? The two that, that captivate me the most personally is that patience is love. How, when we are patient, there is, it's almost like a switch goes off in the other person's head and they go, this guy cares. He's willing to work with me. He's willing. Doesn't that speak volumes? Even if you know someone is willing, you don't even know, need to know what it is, but if a person is willing, that's huge. But to be patient is showing love. 
The other one I like is, is that patience is your clothing. And at, at times I really need to think on, okay, I need to, I need to put this on. Now, when we're dealing with people, there are times when we go, okay, I need to put this mask on, right? I need to be this way. I need to put on this role in dealing with this situation or this circumstance or this person. Patience is no different. It's a reminder to us to, you know what, I need to put on my patience today. Now, we may think that when we're going into a, well, I do when I wake up. But when we're going into a situation or a circumstance that we know can be trying and can be testy, it's not wrong to stop and go, oh, yeah, man, I need to make sure I have my patience on. It's our clothing. What of some of these things grabbed you? through this week. And I'm anticipating, and I know I've made a few cracks about it, but I really am anticipating that we're practicing these things. So over this last week, how have you been able to exercise the gift of patience? Like I said, Deb, no one's half the battle. If, if, you, know, if you know where you're falling short, that just tells you where you need to work on. That's all. Oh, yes, all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but have we, have we had a chance? Do you have an example? Okay, L listen, now I can do this. I can go, okay, can, can anybody tell me an example this week where they lost their patience? Uh, hey. yeah. uh, okay, but I'm, but I'm not, I don't want to be in the negative. So I want to just, just let's, transition over to the positive for a moment and go, when did you hold it and when did you exercise it? Linda. Exercising the patience um, was in an elderly person and they were reading something to me and, you know, they may have read it three, four, five times. And so I'm sitting there and, and I'm trying to hold my patience in. <laughs> so I, I think I did well with that and just to know that sometimes they just need to talk and they just need someone to sit, to sit there and listen. Right. And also maybe them watching a TV show or something and get rerun and rerun. <coughs> you know, I've seen this so many times. But to them, it doesn't matter. You're sitting with them. Right, because they feel loved. And that, that patience, and that's a great example, because that patience is speaking volumes to them. You may be working on patience, and they're feeling loved. It's priceless. Anybody else? Patience with an anxious child. Absolutely. So, yeah. Turns on about the had a lot of patience these last several weeks. Uh, priceless. Priceless. It, for anxious children, well, anxiety. A anyone, any, any and all of us that, that deal with anxiety, if, if someone in, in it at, at various degrees, anyone who is willing to be patient and listen to us is a breath of fresh air. It, it is like you, you care. And, 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 and if it was me, I might not realize it until several days or weeks or months later that someone took the time with me. And we can think. You can go back. Think about your teachers that you had or a coach or someone, Sunday school teacher. It doesn't matter who it is. But you know at some point you may have been a little off the wall and someone took the time with you, right? Right? And they were patient with you. And here we are years later, and we turn around and we look back our timeline, and we go, you know what? That person took time with me. It was patience. It was patience. And, and oftentimes, you know, it, it, we joked about it last week too. You know, don't pray for this, because you know what you're going to get. You know, at points we joked about it, but we don't understand or see the power of it in our own lives that we've lived, that people have exercised towards us. And it, I don't think we look at it like that. 
you know, like you said, when you look back on your timeline and you realize then that somebody was very kind or for whatever reason. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that as patience. But it is. Can you see it? Yeah, once you said it. Steve, did you want something? Well, I was have something? Say, I think last week, I think we all, personally, I think patience is something I need to work on myself. But last week, you, you described it as when we allow God to show, work, his, show his presence through, through us. Yes. So then that takes the burden out of it. It takes the burden off of you. Yes. Yes. And, and, and that's what I've been trying to grasp mentally, basically, it, that whole thing. Because I've always thought, you need to work on it. You need to. You need, and it's just allowing his presence. Exactly. Exactly. That that whole concept, Steve. It, and and that's you know, and I've told several people, um, th this study is like ten years of my life, and and it's I feel like I'm cheating everyone to go. Okay, here's patience. We got an hour. You know, it's just not fair. But those those concepts and that one boils down to this when we accepted jesus christ into our life we surrendered and submitted to his authority right he became savior and lord of our life these fruits of the spirit are simply about us submitting and surrendering to him flowing through us When I have to work on patience, and oh my word, Ian, I need to be more self-controlled. Come on, Ian, you got to be more kind to people. Ian, why aren't you as peaceful as you should be? You know, you, people look at you and they look up to you. Why aren't you that? That is a open door for the enemy to come down and condemn me up one wall and down the other, and then I am defeated and I can't do this. And this is, and I'm done, and I just can't do this anymore because I can't be this perfect Christian that everybody expects me to be. No, you can't. And that's why Jesus died for you. And he died for you so that his light will shine through you. And to do that, we have to surrender the thought that I can be more patient and I can make myself more patient. Because what, do I really want people to see Ian's patience or do I want them to see the fruit of the Spirit? And that's in the introduction why I said, this is not the fruit of Ian. This is not the fruit of Pastor Phil. This is not the fruit of Lisa. It is the fruit of the Spirit. So this whole process in what we're, this mind shift or mental break at points that we're going through is to let the Spirit flow through us and let Him be. So if I look at it in my situations that I walk into every day and I go, okay, I'm walking into a tense situation. And, and where I was, I was director of human resources. That was part of what I did. I had rarely any tense situations at all. <laughs> I know. Liar. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. I saw that on somebody's Facebook page. Um, <clears throat> but I walk in and I'm like, it is my job to show God's peace, his kindness, and his patience. I can do that. I can let him flow through me. And it is that process, though, of still dying to self. Does that make more sense and, and help maybe sink your teeth into this a little bit more? Um, it does. It takes the burden off of you. The only thing you need to do is die. And quit grabbing the paddles to try and resuscitate. You know, when we get those times, it's like, okay, I know, I got this. Boom, boom. I'll bring this dead guy back to life in some way and somehow. Boom, boom. Please, because I don't know what else to do. Trust him. Let him take you down a new path. Just trust him but to go this isn't my patience and when people look at me and they go well ian you're so patient 
Or Ian, you're so kind. Or you're so gracious. It's not my grace. The grace that you're experiencing can never come from me. The kindness that you're experiencing could never be mine. Do you see what I mean? That, what we're talking about now, it, it brings a whole new set of glasses, doesn't it? It's like, wow, um, okay, this is different. Yes, it is, absolutely. And I truly believe that it is the steps forward in putting him on display to whom needs to see him and experience him and know him and have relationship with him. It's a good thing. And it's different. I know that. I know it is. I, Berna. As you're talking, and then Debbie was talking about when you look back, when you see the patient, I think Beth and I probably go through that every year in God's kid because we have these kids that are born, 10 kids born in 50 directions at the same time. But at the end, when December comes and those kids are up there and they say their parts and they come back year after year to just learn more, and it was, I mean, we had to be patient to, to yep. deal with them. And Absolutely. Been born, and I can see a lot of them once they come back, and, and even some that have grown up and they're spending their kids. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so and one of the neat things about that in, in watching you guys even this evening, um, which I was back on my knees and praying and going, Lord, <laughs> no, they just did a wonderful job. It's neat to see how love allows patience to flow and patience shows the love that comes back because those kids love you guys. <laughs> I know, but isn't it a neat circle though to watch and to see? Love is patient and patient shows the love. It's an amazing thing. It's powerful. That's really neat. Thank you, Ms. Fern. Those ladies do an amazing job. Yes, they do. Without question. Yes. I think I can attest to that being in the daycare business for 25 years. I mean, it really tested my patience <laughs> many, many times. But then when I look at the kids that I watched 20, yeah. 25 years ago and see where they are now, just to know that I might have been a part of, yes. you know. Well, Miss Denise, let me ask you this. Of, of all the kids that, that you were involved with, how many have you seen out and about as they've gotten older? Oh, and in college. Okay, and what is their response to you? That they love me. Exactly the point. They, they look back on their lives Miss Denise, their timelines. Things that they they remember that I don't remember. I got <laughs> thank you know, the other day from uh, right. a graduate that's, that's graduated this year. And he said how much uh, a big part I had in his life. He can remember Mondays. We had hot dogs for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and he can remember going outside and playing. And on Thursdays, we had this for lunch. But it it is am it's amazing. It is. I had one family that was four kids, and I've watched all of them. When the last one left, they all wrote me a note telling me what I meant to them. So that's amazing. It is. And it's a blessing. It, it is. It's such a blessing. And even in today, in, in each of our lives, in, in all of the situations and circumstances that we face, whether it's, it's with our children, whether it's at our job, <clears throat> anywhere, we have the opportunity to put God's patience on display and be a part of someone's timeline that points them towards Christ. And it, it's inevitably, it is going, it, it impacts us. It impacts each one of us. 
but there are some unique perspectives that I, I know that we're addressing in, in all of this, ones that Steve mentioned and, and, and Debbie too. Um, but I think there are perspectives and all that we can relate to. And to be able to take what God has done in our lives and what he is transforming us into and what we are becoming, um, it's great to understand that it's not my job to display God's patience. He wants to display it through me. He puts us in the most unique and interesting situations and circumstances. My job is to get out of the way. My job is to get out of the way. Because we know what's right. We know. We just need to do it. And by having times like this and discussion and people sharing what God has done and how he's, they've been used in, in lives, this is encouragement. This is encouraging each other. Are you guys getting in, encouraged by the stories and the things that you're, you're hearing? This is testifying. And this is getting able to hear and feed off of what God has done in Beth's life. And if he's done that in Beth's life, and, and I know that he loves me just as much as he loves her. So he's, he's going to do that in my life, or he wants to do that in my life. You know, it's, it's those type of things. And for us to be able to meet and gather and discuss these things, the, the victories that we've had, the difficulties that we've had, then we're built together and being built together and built up so that we can move forward in what God wants us to do. <clears throat> so patience. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Anyone on Facebook? Okay. I just think sometimes I have to remember he is patient with me. I mean, it's not, it's not what I'm, you know, it's just, hey, wait, wait a minute. He's, he's here with that. He, he's patient with me while I let go of something or let it show or look it back and say, oh, I should have done. Yeah. Or I might have done or, you know, all that sort of thing too. Yeah, that, that is a real point of encouragement because, you know, we can all look back on our, our journeys and our journeys, our Christian journeys with, with the Lord and, and go, you know, um, Good thing he was patient with me. And sometimes people will say, well, he's been patient with you, so you need to be patient with somebody else. Yes, but he's been patient with me, so therefore I get to be patient with someone else. It's not the finger in your face you need to. No, you, you know what? You get to show God's patience to someone else. You get to. And that's good. It's really good. Anything else? I want that you get to show up. Yeah, we're not from a sense of, of, of being arrogant, but from a sense of privilege of being God's son. I get to yeah. do this stuff. Yeah. I get to. And when you're, when you're right there, I don't know how. If it's whatever it is, if it's flowing, it's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're working at it hard, then you need to step back and re re look, reevaluate mm. where you're rooting in the middle of it. Yeah. It's, it's at points, and we've talked about the well worn path, and sometimes, you know, we need to cut a new path and blaze a new trail. <clears throat> and and we've heard the, the phrase often, well, you know, it, it's just second nature. And we've also heard people say, well, it's just not my nature. You know, my grandma wasn't patient. My mom wasn't patient. I ain't patient. That doesn't fly. Because if it's your nature, isn't that what died when you accepted Christ. Yes, it is. So you've taken on a new nature. And at points, 
It's like I'm reminded of a video I saw of a, a giraffe just being born. Has anybody seen a baby giraffe try and walk for the first time? Okay. Can anybody attest to say, you know what, that's kind of what my spiritual life looks like. <laughs> you know, and at points it is. Absolutely. But it doesn't take long in the draft little, you know, the baby draft gets up and walk and stuff. <clears throat> but part of this allowing our new nature to be our nature is a process. And so, you know, maybe struggling to walk. And then I might be riding around on my bike with training wheels. But it's okay. Because it will become your nature. It will. It will be the norm. It is a process. It's okay to go through the process. We will mess up. We are forgiven. And you keep moving step by step. We're all in a process. We're all on this journey to becoming everything that God has designed us and created us to be. There is strength in numbers, so let's do this together. And be patient with one another <laughs> as we're all just, you know, trying to, I know everybody's going to remember the baby giraffe, right? Did they get a video running in your head? So you're going to try, okay, I got to be patient. All of a sudden you're going to be like, oh man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this or not. But it is, it's okay. It's okay. So to kind of um, finish up our notes, um, we left off on how do I reveal God's patience? And I was talking about this, die daily. Impatience is rooted in and often rooted in pride and selfishness. If, if someone is impatient, impatient and after they've calmed down and you're able to talk with them and you ask them this question, why did you get impatient? 9.9 .9 times out of 10, the sentence will start with, well, I... Oh, yeah, we make ourselves that important. And it is about me. It is about whether I'm late or I have something to go to or I need this or it, it is a very inward, self-centered focus. Now, it's not all the time, but most of the times it is. So dying to, dying to self daily <clears throat> and surrendering your life. Now, I've got a question down there. What... God, what do you want me to do today? That question will transform your life. Because, God, what do you want me to do today? Keep in mind, God, I've got all these things. Now, you can pick some of the top, maybe the top three, and I'll, I'll make sure I get those done. But God, this is what I have going on in my life today. But what do you want me to do today? Can anybody else see the conflict there? We are a busy culture. And at times, <clears throat> we manufacture things to do. Whether we do those things or manufacture things to do for whatever the reason may be. But we do. And... That, at a lot of points, leaves God out of our day. So if we take our daily to-do list, and in our quiet time, we sit down with the Lord, and we go, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do today? I'm willing to surrender this list. What do you want me to do today? Can any, does anybody else feel the, Inside? Well, what if he doesn't pick anything on my list? What am I going to do? You know, do you see that? You see that struggle there? <clears throat> Dying daily. There are some things on our lists that are not as important as what God would have us to accomplish that day. He designed us to serve him and to serve others. So if it's, um, you know what, Ian, I need you to kind of blow off your schedule today because I need you to go down and sit in Walmart parking lot because I have somebody down there that I'm going to, 
want you to speak with, then I need you to do that. The stress level can go completely off the charts because I have all these other things to do because God, quite frankly, and I'm going to be very honest with you here, I don't trust you to take care of the other things on my list today. That makes us be patient. It makes us trust. Which is the next point. <clears throat> How do you reveal God's patience is that you trust and that you let go. The Lord knows our situations. He sees us. He has a plan for us. You're not alone in this. And you have to and trust. Point three, trust the vision that God has for the circumstance. <clears throat> that dives into part of the seeing that we've talked about. Um, the gift that, the, that best describes this is discernment. To discern and understand what God is doing and that you get to be a part of his plan. So you reveal God's patience by trust. On the last page, we touched on this a little bit earlier. Stop. Stop making it work. Stop taking it upon yourselves. And this was another point I was going to make, but Steve brought this up earlier. Stop trying to make yourself patient. I love the way Miss Pat said it. Let it, and what I'm talking about, the it here is the Holy Spirit. Let it flow. Let him flow. There are, there's a, a, several different words, and you guys can probably help me out. There are nudges that we get sometimes. Thoughts that just drop in our head from out of nowhere. There are unctions we get. Well, maybe I ought to go. Maybe I should. There was um, earlier, earlier, way earlier this year, um, I was going to lunch with a youth pastor friend of mine, and he says, where do you want to go? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. Wen Wu. Wen Wu. Yeah, we'll go to Wen Wu. He goes, man, I love that place. I'm like, me too. Great, let's go. <clears throat> I'm on my way. He sends me a text. He goes, Ian, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm just going to be late. Can, can we meet at 1230? Like, Absolutely. I had almost kind of planned for it. You guys need, need to get to know this guy. It wasn't anything spiritual. It was just like, oh, I know this guy. I'm going to be a little late. <laughs> <clears throat> so we get to when we were sitting there. We're, we're having lunch. Guess who comes walking in? <laughs> I'm sitting there like... Man, hey, guess it <clears throat> was there for what twenty minutes? I drove in, had drove from we from Wheeling, yeah. just to have lunch by himself. Just felt like that's where I should go. <laughs> <laughs> so that those are the things that I'm talking about. You know, those unctions, those prompts, those those little things that just kind of drop in your heart. And 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 most times, those are are things that that the Holy Spirit is going. Hey, come on. I got an adventure. You want to go? You want to go see what I'm doing? You want to see what I'm up to? Join me. Come on. But if we are so focused on trying to make things work, and here's my schedule, and here's my day, and I've got to push this thing through, then a lot of those unctions are annoying voices that are distracting me from my purpose and my goal and my purpose and, and my focus for the day. And they're not. They're not. Stop trying to control the outcome. I, 
I know, man. You know what? It's been me with this house. God, I know that you are all powerful, almighty, and, and can do all things. I got this. I'm going to call. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make all this stuff happen. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what? I know what I can do. If I do this, 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 and this, then this is going to be the outcome, which is actually my next, my, oh no, this is the outcome. Stop trying to control the outcome. <laughs> And, but I, can, I got this. I can do this. And I have intentionally, with this house, I woke up one morning in 1st of August or so, and I'm like, you know what? It's time to put the house on the market today. Let's get it done. Okay, God, I commit. I'm going to make one phone call, and I'm going to leave it in your hands. Unless you tell me to do something else, unless you tell me to get involved somewhere else, I'm not going to control this. And you know what? I have. And Steve was over there. He was doing this. I'm like, you know, man, I've gotten bite prints all over my fingers. <clears throat> but that is me, you know, biting my fingers and chewing all my fingernails off. Um, that is me being the baby giraffe. That is me riding on the, the bike with the, tri with the training wheels. I I'm working on it. I am working on it. And that's what it looks like for me. And, and yes, have I woken up a couple mornings very early in the morning, rubbing my forehead and going, what am I going to do? Yes, I have. That is part of my journey in becoming a patient son that let God's flow, God flow through this and to trust him. I am not going to learn to trust him if I don't go through these situations, you know the reason you don't trust people? Experience. They burned you. Right? You don't trust them because they burned you. And therefore, you take that and you transfer it to the next person because you know what? You're probably going to burn me too. How about we flip that? I'm a trusting person because God's never let me down. I'm a trusting person because this person I can trust. And that's what God is looking for. He's looking for you to give him opportunities to prove his, his love for you and that you can trust him because you know what? There's going to come another time. And you know what? You can confidently say, and this is where faith just starts to drive home, I can trust him. You know why? Because he did this and he did this and he did this and he did this. And that's why we have this. It tells us what he's done, who he is, and that he can be trusted. How many of you in here journal? Do you journal? Okay. I started journaling, writing down my thoughts. It was a very short book. <laughs> but I started writing my thoughts and started journaling, and, and then I got into some great conversations with God, and, and we can get in, into all that sometime later and what was happening in my life and how God showed himself in my life. And I think I'm on journal 13. Do you know why I keep going? Because after my kids read this and they know who God is and they've seen him do who he, be who he is and do what he said he's going to do, then they can turn to my journals and look and see the God of then is the God of now, is the God whom my dad served, and I can trust him too. God gives us situations so that we can trust him to build our trust in him because you know what? There are storms coming. There are. We know it. But these are the reasons that we're in some of these situations is that you can trust him. Is it going to work out for good? Absolutely, he promises that. Is it going to be a pretty journey? Maybe not. But in the end, he is faithful. So stop making it work. Stop trying to control the outcome. Allow your trust to build in him. And last, stop manipulating the situation or the people in it.
again, leaving that up to the Lord. Yes, Phil. I think it's important that maybe we share a little bit how I tried to control the situation recently with you becoming the pastor here. Okay. And when I finally let go and was just patient, everything happened the way it was supposed to. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know I was trying to control. <laughs> and we were, we were letting Dad handle it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure we were. <laughs> it was. It's it, it's just so so many things, you know, and, and we've had a, an opportunity to share some of the stories about everything that God's done to to place me here, to place us being able to work together, which has just been phenomenal. Um and it's it's just amazing. There are stories and stories and stories that that you guys don't even know. Um one I had a chance to share with Amy um on Friday. Uh, we came um, when we came to, to church one time. We were just sitting in the in the pew, and I got one of the bulletins, and I sat down, and I, I turned the, the bulletin over, and First um, John five seventeen was on the back. It's about prayer, and um, to know when you're praying, know what you're asking, and that is that is one of my foundational verses in teaching me prayer or communication with God. And I sat there and I looked at it and I looked at it and I looked at it. And I'm like, this is important and this is a place for us. And I got, I don't know what you're going to do. And I don't know how you're going to do it. But to me, that was one more sign, so to say. So it is, it's just really, really amazing. Um, a, a few points left and then, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, I, I want to focus more on the first point of being sensitive to your feelings. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just and, um, and state the last two points in, in case we run out of time. But um, first, be sensitive to your feelings. Second, read your Bible daily. And third, listen to God. Be sensitive to your feelings and recognize when you are getting impatient. When those feelings and temptations are happening, here's a few steps. Choose to stop your reactions. Take a breath. Let the temptation of impatience pass. Settle it in your heart that God sees you and knows the situation you're in. Pray, asking for his guidance. Listen for his response and obey. Now, I'm going to address the first part up there where it says be sensitive to your feelings. Oftentimes we're told you can't trust your emotions, right? Can't trust your emotions. I'm going to offer a different viewpoint. And, and it's, it's this. I'll start by asking a question you don't have to answer. But who made emotions? God did. Emotions have been hijacked from the enemy to make something God created not trustworthy. My brain goes, what? God made them. God made them. It's our discernment through the Holy Spirit to understand those emotions as they come through and they come over us. Okay? So, do you know when you are starting to get impatient and it's about to just either or or Okay. It, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's just... I, I chuckle because this is one of the reasons I got suspended in high school. They, they called it, <laughs> this sounds so bad, blind rage. Now, nobody got, well, in, well, they did, injured, but it was a black eye. But it was not like the rage that you see today, by any means. But it was, it's, it was, we can, when a situation is coming upon us, that we know we are getting either frustrated or impatient, you know, pick one, but you can feel it, can't you? And you can feel those emotions start to stir, right? 
we have a well-worn path that we go down because I know when I start to feel this way, then this is my reaction. Be sensitive to your feelings. Be sensitive to your emotions. And when you start to feel those things happen, before, if you can, anything comes out of here, then you need to go here. Stop, take a breath. You have all the power within you to stop. Stop and get God's perspective. Can you trust your emotions? Yeah. Because when they come up, you know what is coming, don't you? Now, I don't mean to just take and run a blanket statement over all of these. There, there are so many situations and circumstances where emotions are just out of this world. You know, I know I've been through there. <clears throat> But most times, you can defeat the enemy and what he wants to do through you by simply stopping and taking check of where you're at and what's going on around you. Does that make sense? Again, I'm going to say this is not easy. It's not easy. You know, God, when Jesus came to earth, you know, he chose 12 guys to impact the world. We can look at it and go, it wasn't easy. Look at their lives. It wasn't easy. So there are some tough things that we walk through, but the tough things we walk through really is joyful in the end. And in the end is sometimes just a situation you may have at work a certain employee comes in late for the 20th time. Finally, the owner says, sit down and talk with them. Let them know that this is their last day. Tense situation because they have children, they have this, they have that. You know, your compassion, your heart's going out to them, but you sit down with them and you're like, okay, here's the situation. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're going to do and it's over. The end can come much quicker than you think. It may be longer than you think, but we get to go through these things because it shapes us and molds us into who he needs us to be to impact our world around us. Any questions or comments? Anybody on Facebook, Pastor Phil? Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up and then we're off next week week after we'll be here to understand god's kindness let's pray heavenly father dear god we do thank you for a wonderful evening that we've had together god we thank you for the questions um god i thank you for the guidance I thank you for um choosing these wonderful paths for us to go down father I thank you for equipping us to be able to do them well and for your glory and for others to see you. Father, as we're gone from one another for two weeks, I pray for your encouragement. I pray for your love to be shown to us. I pray that we are able to show your love and all of your gifts to those around us. Lord, I thank you for giving us an opportunity to serve you in such a fashion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.